On this episode of the Let's Talk Drones podcast, I'm joined by a very special guest, John McBride, better known as the Drone Jesus and formerly of Autel Robotics, has an exciting announcement to make, and we've got plenty of topics to talk about in the world of drones. So without further ado, let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of the LTD Podcast. I told you earlier this year we'd be kicking off the LTD Podcast again after a brief hiatus. And, you know, we're really starting off with a bang here because we've got some big news and we've got an even bigger guest. I'd like to welcome today John McBride. He has no, been known as the Drone Jesus in the community for quite some time. And uh, John, you've had quite a bit of change happen in the past few months here with uh, your uh, career in the industry. All positive, it sounds like, for the most part. Um, but there's really an announcement we want to make. And before we make that announcement, I do just want to let everybody know, uh, typically, Let's Talk Drones and the LTD podcast is brought to you by The Droning Company. Today, we're actually doing a joint podcast venture with The Drone company um and it's because of the nature of the podcast itself john i'm going to go ahead and allow you the the honor of announcing what we want to talk about today and then uh, we'll get into the conversation well thank you my man i really appreciate it as always being here we've done this a couple of times you and i talking that's to right. each other over the years yeah i think that's great uh and trying to bring in um a little bit more value you had mentioned a little bit of my career and career change um i did you know, more recently leave Autel Robotics as the vice president. Uh, that was a uh, kind of a shift on on my idea of what I wanted to do uh, to be more focused a little bit more on training, certification, uh, and talking drone. Um, kind of going down this, this independent idea or, or not necessarily, you know, working for somebody is kind of the general concept of, you know, I, what's the best thing I could do for the industry to help the industry talk drone, uh, help a training, help a certification, help uh, people kind of understand what they're getting into, uh, agencies, I mean, paying attention to the world of what's going on and not just the U.S. focus. I think we've, we've uh, kind of looking at that global focus and, and global opportunities as well. And a lot of people still learning a lot about it, but as far as this announcement, uh, what are you thinking there, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, the, the big announcement that uh, I was uh, made privy to and that we've sort of been talking about uh, recently um, is your your new involvement with the droning company. Um, you know, okay. uh, and, uh, an entity that's been around now for about three years. And that's really sort of what mm -hmm. brought you and I together is, is sort of, uh, you know, what uh, what sort of created this catalyst for this conversation and uh, how we've been moving forward together. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Then I'll, I'll 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 kind of talk a little bit more of where that kind of fit into my play. So, you know, I I uh, definitely you know again trying to look at more of an independent uh, kind of help in the industry concept. Uh, one of the difficulties of that and trying to start a new company. Um, when I announced that on LinkedIn, I had talked about uh, kind of starting a new company, UAS Tech Talk, and mm -hmm. and there was two per two reasons for this, and and primarily was one to kind of say that i'm i'm working on something so don't hire me yet <laughs> <laughs> and two was was to really see if if there was a an idea of of looking at you know spreading the word so to speak trying to be a little bit more have a platform that would allow me to talk to people talk to vendors talk to customers talk to public safety agencies talk to all kinds of different people so the uas tech talk was the was the uh, conceived idea of, of trying to do that and, and where I could fit in as my own company. However, I did look into what it is to try to start. And uh, that that is a that can be a very complicated thing. Yeah. Uh, I was then approached just a few weeks later, not not much farther from uh, Stuart reaching out and, <laughs> and asking me from the droning company, asking me if uh, if there was a possibility to take a position and or Kind of help guide the droning company and what he's put together has been pretty good i think that mm -hmm. the uh um the big thing is is likely with my help and taking a, a position uh which which kind of dabbling around here right now but kind of focusing on the droning company taking the assets that you currently have and focus focusing it to what we could do in the in the industry and again not just us driven 
but globally driven. So I have indeed accepted the position of chairman uh, for the droning company. And um, I'm hoping to be a helpful guiding light with all of the assets and people and uh, the already idea of, of what uh, Stuart has, has kind of put together in the last three years and kind of challenge the team, push a little bit further, get structured to maybe a little bit more. Nobody's saying that the droning company has done anything wrong. I think it's right. great what we've done so far and your involvement uh, with that to put it where it is on the page. But this might help a little bit, you know, with my involvement to try and even even get more uh, structure to it, more capability to it. And again, uh, taking the the people that have already been involved and and putting the rudder to the ship, so to speak. So I'm hoping yeah. I can do that for you. Yeah. And I, you know, I think you're the guy for the job and, you know, everybody that's, well, not everybody, but a majority of the people that will be watching this understand my involvement with the droning company. They're not just a sponsor. Um, it's something that I'm actively involved with as well. But, um, you know, when the conversation came up that you were potentially going to be jumping on board as the new chairperson, uh, you know, I was excited. Um, and one of the reasons that I was so excited uh, was not just because, you know, you were really fun to talk to, really easy guy to get to know and, and hang out with and work with. But um, it's also your knowledge base and, uh, you know, the experience that you bring to the table. Uh, you know, when they, they brought me into the droning company, the idea was I offered a, a knowledge base of drone technology that they didn't currently have. And so I was excited about the opportunity to share what I had. But then, you know, you do get to a point where you sort of realize, hey, what you've got in play isn't necessarily, um, you know, all you need to get where you want to go. And so now that you we're bringing somebody on on board like you who, you know, has the experience, has the knowledge, has been working in this industry longer than me or anybody else that's in the droning company. It is an exciting proposition because, you know, I I, I have full faith that you're going to open some doors for us that um, we maybe didn't have the keys for before. And, uh, you know, you've got the keys. You're the key master. <laughs> well, don't don't put too much on me. But you know, at the same time, I I think, again, you know, that the 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 vision of droning company initially uh, was a great vision. You know, I, 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 I knew about you in the industry. I knew uh, a little bit of just just what droning company meant or kind of what it what it kind of was but i but i really didn't i mean to be honest with you and i think i think that's the one thing about it is is that we want to be able to you know put in together partners and a lot of partners you know we, we got to get this this idea of coming to a centralized uh point that we're all on the same page so to speak yeah. and it's really hard when we have so many people that are that you know between hardware manufacturers software manufacturers users pilots uh commercial pilots you know but but it, i mean it's just it's gotten so big even to the utm stand you know we're going to be flying in drones someday these have all got to to centralize at at one point or another in the industry to really absolutely make it not necessarily grow but just just everybody's on the same page and uh, it's really hard when everybody's still throwing spaghetti at the wall. It's really hard when people are still trying to figure out what's going to stick and changing and pivoting every other every other six months or year. It's even harder to to keep up with the hardware. You know, I mean, we got a new announcement with the new aircraft and this this new uh, manufacturer is coming online. This new drone is going to be out there. This new comp it, 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 it's constant, you know. And yeah. I can't even imagine where your position has been uh, with the droning company to try to stay abreast with that. Plus the other, your other <laughs> podcasts and companies and stuff too. So, so I've been I've been primarily focused on on training and certification. But you know, at the at the broader stage, I've I pay attention to what's kind of going on in the industry. I I pay attention to what's what people are talking in the Facebook groups, where where people call me constantly and ask questions and. And uh, not only about their their product or what they're you know that they've got a firmware problem, but you know what do we do when we when you know what do we, what should we do? What guidance should we look for? Where should we go to get our 107? You know, just very still basic things that uh, battery management. You know, all of these questions that just come along because you and I have been doing this for a little while, but there's some people that have no idea how any of this stuff works. And I and I meet them every day. Every day I talk mm -hmm. to people that are fresh greenhorn people, maybe considering, you know, where to get into the droning industry and 
and how to do that. And I'm hoping to use the the droning company and everybody to kind of to kind of help be that guiding light, so to speak. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I find you know, especially with a lot of the the, the um birthing of new drone companies and entities in the industry, what seems to happen, and I you know. Uh, I don't know if this is fact, this is just my perception of it, is we have a lot of people in the VC realm, venture capital realm, that are looking to make money. And I mean, that's what they do. They, they invest to make money and that's their living. Um, and this industry is really exciting because there's a lot of moving components and there's a lot of possibilities for it. But what happens, I think, a lot of the time is you get somebody that has this vision of what could be, but they don't really have the ability to bring it to life, um, whether it's because of a lack of capital or just because they don't know, they, they can't really put the plan in place. They know what they want the end result to be, but they don't know how to get there. They haven't ha forged the path yet. And what happens is, is people that invest this VC into these companies, um, they don't have a lot of knowledge on the drone industry. Uh, they have what they're able to look up on the internet, but they don't work in it. So they don't know the realities of like, what's a sign that something's healthy? What's a sign that something's not healthy? Um, you know, what is, what isn't, because it's also fluid right now. And so what ends up happening is, is you get a lot of VCs that just get sort of jaded on the whole concept and you start to lose them. Now, what's nice is, is with venture capitalists, you have a constant rolling door of new people that get into it that want to try to invest money. So it never really runs out. But, you know, as an industry, I, I can see that being a symptom of a, a larger problem, and that is establishing identity and a path forward. And I think it is going to be people like you that have got, um, you know, not just the knowledge base, but you also have experience working across a few different companies, a few different entities, and with a variety of different people um, to sort of be able to help guide those ships. Um, that's my next point, though, is, you know, let's talk a little bit about um, your past and, you know, what your experience has been in the drone industry, because a lot of people, especially in recent history, know you as the drone Jesus from Autel Robotics. I mean, your your uh, uh, child was basically the dragonfish. I mean, everybody knew you with the dragonfish. Uh, but you've got a lot more going on than just that as far as your work history goes in the in the industry. Maybe bring people up to speed. You know, tell us what you're all about. Oh, it, it goes way back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, 20, 23 years now, if you consider where I consider the change. And when I say the change, it's kind of specific to, I've been an RC radio controlled enthusiast, you know, since I was a kid. I've been flying and building and putting together RC airplanes, helicopters. And so there's always been this, you know, internal desire to build and make things, you know, Legos behind me and RC kits, I've got 50 or 60 airplanes, you know, a dozen choppers. I can't even tell you how many drones of different carcasses I have that I've that are <laughs> that were building, you know, making them before, you know, nobody nobody made gimbals. I had to make my own gimbal back in 2003, 2004, you know. I mean, we didn't have flight controllers uh to just, you know, slap together like a Pixhawk or or something like that, you know, or even some of the DJI flight controller. We, we didn't have that. So we had to kind of scramble. And I say we, meaning I just didn't really have a lot of resources to kind of dabble into the idea of making, you know, a autonomous aircraft that didn't need necessarily a pilot like an RC hobby. You know, it's it 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 kind of flies itself. It has cameras on it. So that change basically shifted from enjoying the hobby to to fly for fun to now give whatever project I was working on a purpose, a job, give it something to do. Again, whether that was a helicopter carrying a camera uh, or if it was an airplane doing something with with, uh, you know, uh, multispectral or something, you know, it just we had all kinds of things I played around with. There's uh, a number of companies back then, like I said, that were uh, coming online, and a lot of them were American companies. Some I was sourcing parts from Germany. I was sourcing things from other places all across the the world. But again, this was just me messing around in my basement, you know. Uh, eventually, I worked with a company that uh, built RC helicopters, and um, I was kind of in charge of of uh, helping with that, helping not the design, but how to how to modify the aircraft to be able to hold a camera. Mm -hmm. And again, I had to make, I had to kind of help, you know, create a gimbal that stabilized to some degree. We didn't have brushless motors back then. We didn't have any of that. And so 
um, one of our one of my first you know customers was actually here in Utah, uh, the Highway Patrol. Very simply, taking a camera and and getting a picture of an of a fatality accident. Mm-hmm. That that was it, you know. Uh, and an aircraft like that, an RC helicopter, not a drone, with a camera up on the front end to take a picture. Uh, fifty to seventy thousand dollars <laughs> without even wow. without even blinking an eye. <laughs> yeah, wow. Was, uh, um, and so now, I mean, today, what you can do with something like a, a a mini or or a smaller UAS like that, holy cow! You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 astounding what you can do today versus what you could do even just just barely fifteen years ago. So you got to consider, you know, fifteen years ago we didn't have lithium polymer batteries. We didn't have uh, brushless motors. We didn't have uh, cameras that were like meant to be integrated. You know, these were handheld walk around JVC cameras that we'd <laughs> slap on these things. And, you know, so so that's kind of where it started, just messing around with it to then moving into a, a, a hobby shop that uh, kind of focused. We by that time, the Phantom had been released. Uh, you know, I was building the F, the F550, the 450. They even made a 330. DJI did S800s, 900s, and you're still kidding this stuff together. You know, mm-hmm. but you know the multi rotor because we didn't really call them drones yet. Uh, the the defining um, company that that I believe in my in my opinion, I won't say that this is really exactly the point, but uh, the the guys that came along and called something a drone were Parrot. Parrot came okay. out with a a product, you know, called the AR drone that we all then now recognize as a multi rotor, mm-hmm. four blades. Uh, it was definitely a consumer product. I even bought one. I got a picture of one in 2010 flying in my kitchen, and it, <laughs> and it used my phone. You know, Bluetooth connection, moved it around. You know, not the traditional RC stuff I was used to. I just thought, man, cool. But um, yeah, they they called it a drone. And so in the hobby world, you know, again, a little bit more deeper history. We didn't we didn't really call them drones yet. We called them multi rotors. And that, that's what they were called because they had multiple rotors, <laughs> you know, three <laughs> blade, four blade, six blade, eight blade, whatever it was that you were designing. But I moved on to a uh, commercial. Um, I mean, I was getting away for a little bit less from the hobby side. And then uh, uh, was hired to a company, RMUS, Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems out of Utah. Okay. I think that's where the kind of my knowledge really started to, to excel um, with my partners there. Uh, we were introduced to a, to a lot of companies that needed help. Uh, we were introduced to a lot of product. DJI was, was kind of getting their stuff moving along. And for me, a guy that made stuff in my basement, you know, I could make two or three of those a month. All of a sudden, I, I could I could you know sell two or three a day. You know I could sell twenty a day, and these are all really focused on on trying to get the enterprise side um, kind of push forward. I didn't want to do consumer. I kind of stayed away from that because it was it's a very it's very noisy. But uh, FPV racing um, had already been doing that for for a decade before they even called it FPV racing. You know. <laughs> it's like, you know, I so you're to you're an old analog then, guy. Like you you know how to oh, buy definitely the old analog. That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. That's yeah. it's an art that's yeah. being lost in the world of FPV. I got in and like I started in digital. Like that's that's how I started FPV. And really, I've talked to people. I'm like, hey, should I try analog? And they're like, no, no. I mean, like it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's sort of like if you want the nostalgia factor, then yeah, go for it. They said, but if you're looking for like a similar or better experience there like now digital at this point is the way to go so it, we, I, I was doing fpv before you had goggles i mean we, we, we <laughs> i was i had a wagon that i'd drag out a crt tv oh and, it ha- and i had my own <laughs> antenna and i built my own i mean that's how far back that goes and wow. i wasn't using multi-rotors because like i said those weren't quite the thing but uh long distance airplanes um helicopters that could go pretty far uh you know that video trend that's that was uhf vhf that was way before 5.8 <laughs> 2.4 analog and now digital and who knows what'll be next i mean i'm telling you you know it's it's crazy and so you know this 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 whole learning 
building hobby uh, love for it. You know, eventually, as the as the bigger companies, you know, again, DJI came along, Autel, others, you know, came along, Intel, GoPro, uh, 3DR. You know, these were pretty big names, um, but I can I can give you a dozen other companies out of China, out of Taiwan, out of Germany, out of Poland, out of U.S. that didn't make it. You know, that they they came in with a concept idea, maybe sold, you know, X, Y, Z, maybe less than 100, maybe maybe a couple. Yeah, I don't know. But they just like you said, VC wise or investment from a big company just didn't quite catch on Mm -hmm. they didn't catch on and uh we have to remember and be quite respectful i think to dji i think we have to understand that what they they did uh and still are doing um is the gold standard Mm -hmm. you know and and when it comes down to that investment money i've talked about this before and people are like oh i don't think that defines you know no 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 If you are a money guy and you have no idea about this industry and you read something in the Wall Street Journal that says, hey, the the drone industry is going to be climbing by billions, where where would you put your money? You know, you try to find whoever picked the winner. You would try to do that. I mean, you're crazy if you don't. That's how America works. You know, (laughs) like like that's how it works. That's where that's where all these guys go for different series round funding and begging for money and trying to build something so that. The original investors could eventually look like a an Amazon or a or a big Facebook or something like that. that's what they're waiting for and you know um, but you know DJI has never had never given an opportunity to publicly trade um, but they but they grew exponentially and were they funded by the government where they you know have ties to the government well they're in China. And even our own American companies have ties to the government. You know, they, they people ask about, you know, questions like that all the time, you know, the government entities. And and uh, so I, I don't want to get into that portion of the political side of it, but sure. you've got to give them credit. And they aren't a single one manufacturer for one country, as most of the companies here are. They globally, globally send out equipment. Yeah. Autel, which I you know, as I moved on and came into Autel, um, you know, they they have they most certainly have had a chance to try and do that. The the manufacturing capabilities in China are much different than they are here in the United States. I've been to multiple factories, even the the big ones here in the U.S. That you're like, wow, this is this is as, as big as my garage. You know, <laughs> this looks like. Yeah. Like like other, we're making a hundred dollars a day. <laughs> yeah, but barely even that. Maybe a hundred a month. You know, um, and 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 nothing against it. It's just right. it's just that we're the scalability of what of what DJI did globally blows your mind. You know, and um, you know we want to be able to we want to be able to help people kind of over this hump mm-hmm. uh, to try and 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 give give the fortitude to you know, manufacturers all over the world. I mean, we can't be, well, we're we're not making any money, so we got to go after these guys because we're not, you know, that that's so un-American to me. And that's, that's my opinion. You know, the, the free market idea, you know, you'd be marketing with good. And, and again, there's a lot of things that they would announce that took very little marketing skill as me as a reseller. I, you know, I mean, they, they announce something, everybody wants it. You know, it's, <laughs> and it, it's it's sort of you said you used the term gold standard earlier, and it's really because you know my, I started my journey as a drone pilot with a Phantom Three professional, you know, and so that was what my entire understanding of what a drone should look like or how it should behave mm-hmm. and how you should interface with it. That's how my entire foundational understanding of drones started. So when you take somebody like me, and there are hundreds of thousands of me's out there that had a similar start to how they they got into yes. drones it's it, yeah it, it, you, if you don't deliver something equivalent to that or even in the ballpark to that it's an immediate turnoff and that's exactly why they don't really need to put a lot of effort into marketing or a lot of money behind marketing because they deliver a, a consi- not just a consistent but a consistently 
great experience when you're flying their platforms. That's why. And, you know, it, I hear something's dropping from DJI. I just get on their website every once in a while to see what's going on. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I need it, to buy. <laughs> you know, it's and, like and I, here I am, a reseller, a reseller. And what do I got to do? I, I I got people calling me after right after the announcement. Hey, do you have do you have? Is it ready? Can I get it? You know, when can I get it? You know, and and the the consumer side of this, you know, definitely pushes people to, uh, you know, be I want to get that now kind of a concept. Well, that rolls it over into the enterprise channel too, as well. You know, I mean, I mean, as soon as a new M210 was announced or the V2 or a new sensor or a new light or new anything that they would that they would produce created a ton of buzz that people had to have it right now. And um, you know, and 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 there's a again, we have we have to give them a little credit here. You know, we can't just say, well, just because they're Chinese, they're bad. And that that's yeah. so that's such the wrong message, uh, you know, um, that 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 they have clearly, you know, defined what the industry is. As you had mentioned, you know, you you were just getting into a Phantom 3. And uh, it is something I talk about often. But, you know, I I pose the question to our, our current market. You know, when you go to buy something, you know, you look for three things, you know, 90% of the time you're looking for three things. One is quality, you know, quality of the product, you know, is it, is it going to be a good product? And you made that decision when you went out and flew, you looked, you probably did some research initially of like, just kind of what am I looking at? Maybe looking at what was available at the time. And we'll talk about that in a second, but you know, what is the quality, quality of the product, quality of the flight, quality of the image, uh, you can go into, you know, wh where is it readily available, meaning that like where have you bought it from? Uh, can they help me if I have any problems? You know, that's part of quality as well. Quality of the company has a lot to do with that. Absolutely. Uh, the second one is your price. You know, when you're looking at price, you have because with the Phantom 3, there was three different versions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they had the advanced. They had the the. Um, what was the other one? The the silver thingy, and then they have a gold thingy. <laughs> you know, they had three different types. Yeah, of, yeah. Of the they Phantom had like 3. it was like the regular one, which had the red stickers. That was the that was the original. Yes. Profe that was the Phantom Three, and then they had right professional, um, and then they had advanced. I think that was it. It was just those three. Yeah, and 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 out of those three, you had three different price models. You know, that mm -hmm. one was a little bit more expensive than the other, and so you would decide even just within their own product line. You're deciding what price is the price I'm willing to pay for that. You know, yeah. um, do I need this or do I need that? And and when it comes down to price, you know, there's especially in the public safety side, they have a ton of budgeting they have to do. They have to consider how, who they're going to ask, you know, and how long it's going to take for money. Um, and they they don't always just have an open credit card like some consumers or some some people do. So mm -hmm. when you get up into the 15 20 25 50 plus range you're you're really asking them to literally pull teeth out of their out of their faces and try to you know it's really hard for them it's really difficult you know it's um but the third point you know was was availability and when when you're ready to purchase something and you figured out it's great i want it that's a great price when can i get it mm -hmm. and and when it when when you find that you're unable to to get a product to go out and start doing work with it or you would plan projects especially you being a, a commercial pilot you start planning projects and you need another phantom three you need another whatever and it takes six months to get one yeah you're gonna go buy something else you know you're Absolutely. gonna go get something else you know and so in a um, best case scenario i'm gonna we, wait you know i'm not even gonna purchase that moment i'm just gonna be like i'm gonna wait till they start shipping and then i'll purchase you know Yes. Yeah, exactly. Wait till it shows up in the store, you know, and then and then again, like I was a reseller, Arm US, and people are poking around, you know, they're calling me, they're calling droners, they're calling, you know, UVT, they're calling all these companies to see who has it, you know, who physically has it so they can get it. And, uh, you know, we, we, DJI did a really good job with this on all three categories and still does. Mm -hmm. And that's where, again, it becomes challenging for you know, when when Autel released the Nano and the Light, the Nano, which is supposed to be kind of a push against the mini series, the Light that kind of pushes against the Mavic series, um, you know, that's really hard to be like, I'm 20 or 30 percent more. Well, you know, what are you going to choose as a as a father that's looking for 
a present for his 13 year old son or something like that. And you're at Best right. Buy and you ask the guy in the blue shirt, which one do I get? And he's like, well, we have this black one, we have this gray one, we have this thing. And what are you going to, you're going to go for price. You know, that mm -hmm. that's the one. Uh, you'll look at quality maybe later. You'll look at specs maybe later. But if it's more expensive, you would expect more value and more more quality out of it. And yeah. again, if it's not available, then we're going to choose something else, you know, very exactly. quickly. So, exactly. so th those are going to be the, the biggest challenges with our American drive to change the industry and try to manufacture and create a little bit more. And, and again, I, I wanted to touch on quality as well as, uh, as, is not just the, again, flight time and the camera, you know, when I have a product that is fully integrated into, into other systems, software integration, uh, flight logs, integration, uh, moving video and data somewhere in, you know, all of these things have got to be part of, that gold standard that DJI created, you know, because mm -hmm. again, you, you, you nailed it, man. The experience that you had out of box ready to go, it was a, was a positive experience. And if you cannot give that to a consumer, no matter what layer they are, that's a problem. You know, that's mm -hmm. a big problem when you've got somebody out there doing it all the time. And the only thing we can win with is, is check the American made box but everything else of those three points suck. I don't, you're doing a discredit to the people that currently have the products today and telling them they just can't use it no more. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's bad. And if we, if we go into that whole, well, it's, you know, it's, they're stealing our data, they're taking our stuff, they're doing all, oh my God. <laughs> you know, like, and and there, you know. I want to get into a little bit of that because I just recently had an interaction with an individual on Twitter. I won't use specific names, but um, before we do that though, I, I do just want to say, I mean, like, you're so right about the quality um, of the product and, and bringing things up to par because um, even with companies that send me drones that they're definitely Chinese based companies, um, DJI and even Autel, you know, I'll put them in this category, although I will say DJI's got the superior camera tech. But um, but even Autel, at this point, they do the camera stuff so well, so much better than every, anybody else, camera and sensor for that matter, that it's it, like I'll get a drone from a different manufacturer. And I don't even really think about that consciously when I'm flying because I'm just expecting it to be less. So what I'm looking for when I do that is, OK, we already know the camera's probably not going to be up to snuff. Uh, but what can they be up to snuff on? Okay, well, uh, ease of setup is one thing they can be up to snuff on. How quickly can I get your drone up in the air and how much of a pain in the neck is it? Uh, and then the flight experience, you know, just because DJI and Autel have sort of cornered like, hey, we've got top of the line camera systems on our drones. Uh, and these other companies don't, that doesn't mean they can't put together a solid flying machine. And so when I fly their drone, do I feel like I'm in full control of the drone? Do I feel like uh, the drone's going to fall out of the sky? Do I feel like, uh, you know, X, Y, Z while I'm in flight? And as long as most drone manufacturers can deliver at least a somewhat um, easy experience when it comes to setup and flying, they typically get a good mark from me just because it's you can't even put them in the same category as those top two drone companies. It's hard to. No, it, when you know, one of the biggest things is like, and again, you got to give them credit. I'm selling DJI equipment out the door at Arm US. We are, you know, both enterprise level and and uh, in some cases consumer level. Even though I said we didn't primarily focus on consumer, well, you'd have people that would are just starting. They're just getting going. They want to buy the M300 but they're not going to go out and spend that for their first drone. So they're right. going to buy a Phantom, a Mavic, a, you know, experience, kind of get the, the ball rolling, so to speak. Well, once you're kind of offered, you know, a plethora of different product lines that you're, that, that people can move through a lot of the companies that I've worked with, you know, all of them, <laughs> they make one, they make one drone. Maybe they make two. I mean, they don't make a plethora of movement, you know, through the through the stuff. So when you're talking quality of flight, that implies that every drone that, that DJI has ever made, every version has got flight controller tech that is based on that model. Mm -hmm. They don't make I, I, I get very frustrated by people that use an open source architecture and the Pixhawk <laughs> idea and maintaining this idea that 
that well, that's what the 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 um, you know DOD wants. And I and I'm like, you know, once you once you're in that architecture, you're locked into, you know, you you don't have as much, I believe, um, variables to play with the size, the 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 video transmission systems, the control systems. You're kind of locked into that. Even the the sonar sensors and the lidar sensors have got to be kind of specific to that architecture. I mean, DJI has you know close to 1,200 engineers that just that just work on flight controller code for all of their different drones. You know, yeah. they don't have one guy that just does one codex for you know one aircraft. Mm-hmm. They've got to come up with if it, if they make it this big, it's going to fly differently than something that big. Yeah. And if it's if it's even bigger than that, it's it's got to have different algorithms and and IMU characteristics than the next one. And when we get this perception that oh no, we we can make something just as good, that's why we have a lot of problems with stability in flight. You know, um, at least what I've seen. Um, Autel started with with that open architecture, and then they started making their own proprietary flight controllers, proprietary uh, stuff for everyone. There's, we do not use, or I can't say we anymore, but Autel doesn't use a Pixhawk in the Dragonfish. Mm-hmm. There's no way that that, that 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 aircraft could ever fly based off of, a, off of that hardware. It mm-hmm. has to be custom made. It has to be prior, priority code. You know, it's got to be that mm-hmm. proprietary stuff. It can't be that. Um, and even if you look at, you know, it's just got brushless motors, it's got servos to move things around, it just can't. And uh, there's there's a handful of companies that 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 uh, that have that capability, and uh, that sometimes scares people a little bit in that uh, you know data security you know problem. Is that well, yeah. if it's proprietary, then that means that they're they're capable of taking stuff and. You know, everybody back to the VC thing wants to protect their own IP. You sure. know, they, they don't they don't want to give that away. And so, you know, but anyway, it, it's a fallacy to, to use open open source stuff. If you if you're really a good company that can design and make and have the engineers to create a specific product that's going to hit the market the way it should and perform, it's it's got to be done that, you know, more coded and specialized for that product. You know, I, I just don't see it working very well uh, otherwise. I agree. You know, I've got a lot of experience now at this point uh, using uh, a variety of those open source uh, hardware, firmware, software solutions. And, um, it, you know, it... <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just the nature of why it's built the way it's built. Obviously, it's open source, so it's built for customization. So after the fact, somebody can get their hands on it and turn it into um, a, a loose model of what it used to be. Uh, but there's just something slow and inconvenient about a lot of those processes. I won't say all because I haven't used everything that's out there under the sun. But from my experience, the things that I have used, um, it, it's been slow, clunky, uh, and just not the experience like we're talking about that that ease of setup, ease of interface, ease of access. That's the stuff that you're looking for as a drone pilot, especially when you're talking in the commercial sector. You're talking about police fire departments that are using these drones for overwatch. Yeah, and you need they, that drone in the air in seconds to give you the data that you need. You can't be messing around yeah. with, oh, I need to, you know, uh, calibrate the compass and I need to recalibrate the the IMU again. And I need to oh, make sure that this link is good. It, it's just not it's not acceptable at this point, you know. No, no. Like I said, we've got now some operational gold standards that have Mm -hmm. to hit because that's what people expect. And when they don't get that with those three, those things, things I was talking about, the quality of that is terrible. They have it, but it's expensive. They're going what, you know, and and again, I, I just I just don't believe in that, you know, perception of of the. American made drone is the only way to do it. You know, I mean, we've, yeah. we've got, we've, they've, they've had a decade to be able to build a company and, uh, you know, service again, the globe. And we have to, we have to think that way now. Now, th- what does this actually mean? Well, again, we have to invest as a, as a government, <laughs> as a, <laughs> into these companies, you know, yes. we can't expect the VC boys to fund the whole show. You know, we've got to get contracts 
We've got to get things lined up to be able to do. We have to put capital into the engineers. And this goes all the way back, you know, I mean, I mean, the main flight controller engineer in in at Autel um, was schooled in the United States. Mm -hmm. He went to college here. Yeah. You know, I. Uh, you know, and, and 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 it's it's nothing to get. You know, there's there's guys that, people that come from all over the world to get educated here, but then they go back and and they do amazing things. You know, yeah. and we we got to we got to keep people like that here too. You know, we've got to make sure that we have the engineers and the focus for those people uh, to uh, to keep designing and and pushing forward. You know, what we can do in America, um, yeah. but. We got to get over ourselves that we don't make the best things from since sliced bread. We've got to get over ourselves. We got to take our egos and crush it a little bit and just be like, look, you know. I couldn't agree with you let's more. Learn from the best. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I just I, the, earlier today I had a phone conversation with Stuart Smith, the CEO at the Droning Company, and um, this is one of the things that we talked about. And uh, you know, the, the the way that I see it is this: look, I I'm all for you know pro America. I'm all for, you know, supporting American companies. Obviously, I'm an American. I'm very grateful to be here and be a citizen, be born into this country. I hit the I hit the lottery. A lot of us did. But mm -hmm. that said, you can't sit here and and continue to say, "Oh, well, we do it, you know, we do it better. We can do it better." We can't. Not with the way things are right now. And uh, you know, one of the things that I and you you hit on it. I mean, you hit it right on the head the exact way that I think about it is our government's not doing, you know, we're addressing this problem, this problem that I, I have a question for you here in a moment that I want to ask. We have this problem out there that China is using uh, this technology to spy on us and using this uh, this technology to backdoor information about us. But it doesn't seem like the gov the same government that is, you know, spouting all this off is doing anything to help accelerate the growth of the American drone industry from a grassroots perspective. I don't see any type of, uh, you know, grants being written. I don't see any type of funding being offered um, or any type of deal to help manufacturing processes for these companies that exist now that could really use it at a time like this. So my question that leads me into this. My question is this. And this also taps into the the interaction I had on Twitter earlier. What it, what proof is there? I mean, is there any proof out there that exists, hard line, fast evidence of DJI has been stealing information and taking it back to the Chinese government? And if it's out there, you know, why isn't it being talked about more? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a hard one to answer at every level. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just start with, it's China. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it's China, it just means it's bad. You know, that's one perception of it's, it's China. So whatever China is making, and whatever they got over here functioning, it's got to be bad because it's China. Well, you got to break that down. You know, at least for me to understand on a technical guy that understands how this stuff works. You can't say that to me and just go, it's because. I was like, because, you know, the computer I'm using was made in China. The TV I'm watching was made in China. The, the, the cell phone I use. Chairs, the cell, you know, <laughs> my microwave is Wi-Fi. Can you believe that? My microwave is Wi-Fi, probably made in China. And, they want to know what you're having for it, dinner. <laughs> is, I mean, come on, you know. I mean, I, I, it it will tell me when my when my dinner's done cooking and it's attached to my Wi-Fi. Can you believe that? That's where we're at. And if that becomes a whoa, we can't have microwaves anymore <laughs> that 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 you know have an app connected to it because it's going to tell China something. I mean, but let's let's break it down. Like I said, let's let's look a little bit more in detail. So what I always have asked, you know, what is the data that we're afraid of? Is it is it all data? Is it is it flight log data? Is it firmware data? Is it picture video data? Is it user data? Is it is it just data data? You know, I mean, you you got to break that down to define exactly where and what you would consider um, national security issues of that data. If it's a GPS point, um, again, is it the camera angle? Is, is it the image? And when we really, really try to see, like, like I've, I've listened to this, this crap about hacking into drones and flying drones. I mean, if, if, if a Chinese company can do it, why couldn't an American company do it? 
That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, seriously, if yeah. if if we got the same amount of data that's flying around, you know, and and we think that our our data is safe, you I mean I've got I've got some companies I've worked with in the past that don't even want their own company to know what they're doing, you know, and and they they come up with security, and we're not talking like like secret secret you know top secret stuff. They just they they just want to be able to to have that security at, 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 at some degree. But when you ask, you know, what is it? You know, so anytime I have a, you know, an electrical device, like I said, I brought up a computer, my TV, my phone, the drone. If you need to do an update, a change, improvements, you know, anything like that, you have to connect to the internet to make that happen. Yeah. You know, you have to have a way to do that. Only other way around that is if you have the actual uh, file, that you can load into it. So if I never had to have this talk to the internet or connect to the internet, it's the only way I could make it a dumb, a dumb phone, a dumb device. Uh, right. But if I had the ability to to manually update these things, there's no way it, that the internet would ever touch it. I I, I actually put out a uh, a thing. I, I said I had an Inspire One, and I retired that bird at three thousand three hundred flights. Wow. You flew that yeah. a lot. <laughs> a lot. Training, videos, whatever you want to do. You know, even prior, I mean, this is long before 107 stuff. And so here, you know, 3,300 flights. I, I mean, how many times did I press the record button? How many mapping missions did I do with it? How many anything? And I put out a a, a, a request uh, to the to anybody that could show that I had flown anywhere or did anything with that drone in that 3,300 flights, if they could play it in China, show me something from China, show me the data, show me that that I actually even flew 300, 3,300 flights. Yeah. Show me the last 200 flights I even flew. And the only reason I knew I could make this claim without ever paying out a dime to anybody is because I never connected it to the internet. It was at a point that didn't need to be updated anymore. It didn't need to be messed with anymore. And I didn't have to have current map systems loaded onto it. I didn't sure. even have to run the actual DJI app anymore. And so for the last 2000 flights, I I used an iPad that didn't even have um, connection capabilities ever, you know? And so that data never went anywhere. Well, how do I teach people to be safe with things if if there's not a way to do it within the own their own system, you know, if I can't operate the drone without being connected to the internet, well, that that could be a problem. And we're back to what data is important, you know, right. um, what infrastructure. That that's another layman term I hate listening to is infrastructure. Infrastructure. Uh -huh. You're like what infrastructure? Like what it's a blanket term. Infrastructure. It's right. such a blanket term. You know, I mean, does that mean don't look at the the tree that's growing somewhere, or does that literally mean don't look at nuclear facilities that we can somehow fly a drone in and it can steal all of our data? Dude, if that's the case, then we got a problem with we with got more big than just, problems. This, yeah, we got a nuclear facility that 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 can be data stolen in a, in a in a second because a drone flew over the top of it. I mean, come on. Well, the other um, side of it too is you know. where where else can you know identifying what data is important. So that would be like the first pain point if you were able to get the people that are are beating this drum to sort of quell that ego and just like be honest for a second and say, okay, well, what data is concerning to you? Okay, let's go down a rabbit hole of all the data points that your data points that you had selected. And let's find out other sources that you can easily get that data from. So like, you know, people are concerned about aerial map or aerial imagery of this infrastructure. Google Maps. I mean, I can get on Google Maps right now and to a, a, a level that you could probably derive some sort of information about operation procedures or, you know, weak points around certain types of infrastructure. You can pretty much deduce that pretty quickly from Google that it's that quick. You wouldn't even need to I, deploy I, a full scale to, drone I, army, you know. I, absolutely. I mean, other than the images and looking at things and kind of locating where a building might be and trying to decide what that building is, you know, on a, on some whatever. Um our, our big issue again is is just where are the layers you know and then and then here's the other part we don't have a standard that says well no drone should be transmitting this information right no drone should be doing this oh well if it's american made or if it's made by one of our nato countries then it's okay to to be able to transmit anywhere 
No, right. I no, can tell you not. right now that no cop is going to want that. No agency is going to want the ability for that information to fly anyway at, at all. Right. And so when you and and then when you do have, you know, power companies that are doing inspections on, they don't want that data going anywhere either. So you better be absolutely 110% secure, whether it's from China or not, it has to be secure. And where are the standards for that? That we we use 256 encryption. Dude, people don't even know what that means. No. You know, they don't even, 128, oh, golly. Well, these guys make 256 encryption. I'm like, do you even know what that means? <laughs> I mean, <you're> like, <laughs> <They're> right. <laughs> like, uh, like, seriously, I mean, that. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. and then we're making laws against certain things. But we haven't got standardization on where the drone and what it should be doing and what information it should be storing nobody's done that and and back to dji nobody has told them if you're going to make a drone that flies in the united states you you got to hit these thresholds you have to have a third party look at it you've got to make sure it's not doing these things and the hardware is great it flies the way it's supposed to but it's got to meet these requirements nobody has published anything like that in this industry no, to no. any manufacturer that makes a drone i don't and tell we you need to get there Oh, for absolutely. That should be one of the higher priorities in that conversation. And, you know, the other thing that I would caution people to be careful of, and this, again, comes from that interaction I had earlier on Twitter, is the the person that was sort of beating the drum that, um, you know, China's bad, uh, America's good, the drone technology is definitely spying on us. You know, I posed the question I just posed to you. Where's the evidence? You know, because if, if you can give me hard, fast evidence, proof Wall Street. that this. Right. Oh, I, I read something in the Wall Street Journal. MSN right. said something on the news. Uh, oh. So and so said so. Oh, they were at a base and somebody did a little quick investigation and they know the data is going. So, I mean, what the? I can no. give you federal investigations that actually happened that said otherwise. I can yeah. tell you that there were people that, that have looked at it third party, whether they were hired by DJI or not. And th it's out there. There's there's a phrase that I've noticed in this link. And then as I started to go down the rabbit hole and look for other similar articles, because this person sent me a link to a website that looks fairly official, um, you know, something government style, but it's not it's not government. Um, it, 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 there's a phrase that they use. And this is what I caution people to be careful of. Could be possibly those are those are phrases that are meant to instill a little bit of um uncertainty and that's the source of that paranoia that's happening right now is that uncertainty that fear of what could be we don't have any proof that i've seen and like you i eat sleep and breathe this stuff i would be pretty well versed on any type of proof that's out there um it it, it, it just because it could be doesn't mean it is and so should we be aware of the could be's uh, sure, I think anybody should be, no matter if it's China, no matter if it's France, Germany, whatever. 100%. But 100%. unless it's happening, why are we why are we basically on the verge of dismantling what we've already built drone wise because, in the country? Because it's China. Because yeah. it's China. That's exactly <laughs> you know, so, it. That's ex so, China bad, America good. That's that's what this whole and, thing is. And I'm down to. I'm a I'm a VC guy that's not making any money, man. What the hell? I've been putting money into this company for the last three years, and nothing's happening. Why isn't it happening? Well, we got these guys that are just kicking our ass, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and uh, we need to get rid of them. And uh, there's no other way to get rid of them than to get lawmakers involved, and yep. that is a that is going to set a bad precedence. And like I said, give it give it some time. You know, when we come down to my three points of price being the, the most important one, even adding a 25 percent tariff from any product that comes into the into the country here that is made in any DJI, Autel, any product that comes from China has a 25 percent tariff attached to it. And it's still and that's passed on to the consumer. That's passed on to the consumer. It's just you could buy it over there in China for a thousand dollars, but here you've got to add twenty five percent on it. That's what it's passed on to the consumer, and that twenty five percent is still added. Is still cheaper than the rest of the American options. Yep. Still cheaper. Yep. And when you consider again, back to my points, quality, price, and availability, that is what is going to win. Yep. And you can't deny people the ability to pick the best things to get their jobs done Absolutely. you can't 
you know, pull that away just because we are in that possibility, you know, phase, you know, and, and if that's what it's going to, if, if we go down this road, which I caution our legislators to just, you know, you have to prove it to me. If you can't prove it to me, if you can, and even if you can, if you can prove it to me and show me that there is nefarious information going somewhere else and it is absolute, then come up with a standard and precedence that makes every drone company follow those standards. If you don't have that, then any information can be flying around out there in the world that any one company or any one individual or any one agency might get upset about. So we've yeah. got to change that in the yeah. industry. There, there's a lot that I think needs changed before we can seriously go down this route. And, you know, you you touched on it and I just want to reiterate it is, you know, I, I look at some of these other countries um, and and some of the, the ways that their government is supporting the manufacturing, not just in this industry, but across many other industries as well. Uh, we're we're addressing a uh, what what is being perceived as a problem. Um, we're addressing this paranoia based problem, but we're not doing anything to actually we're, we're acting in the negative. We're not doing anything in the positive. So it's OK. We have this perceived potential problem here. Uh, OK, fine. If you're going to say that, we'll let that stand as it is right now. What are we doing to actually support American drone companies, American drone manufacturers, because right now, as far as I'm aware, the only thing that we're doing is just a allowing the the government to make a law that outlaws you know certain drones from different countries mm -hmm. that's really a non-answer in my opinion because now what happens and I, I look at ACL uh, ACSL ACLS I can't remember the how that acronym goes but the Japanese drone company that has that so Soten drone coming yes. out okay that's not an American company but it's not been deemed unsafe either. So now if Japan swoops in and starts making drones that are equivalent or at least in the ballpark of DJI, how are we handling that? Uh, because I, I guarantee you they will also outpace us just based upon. How about Taiwan? You know, Taiwan, Taiwan has got great manufacturers. Even Vietnam has great manufacturers. You know, they all they have to do is 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 come up with a couple of guys. And, you know, you ask, you know, what do we, what do we need? We need money and we need time. Mm -hmm. Those are the two biggest things right now. Nobody has any money unless they get some big contract from the government. And we don't have enough time, meaning that we're not patient enough to actually build good products and create good products for the industry. Mm -hmm. And without those two, two factors right there, we are going to keep flailing along like every company that has come. And like I said, I can give you more than a dozen companies here in the U.S. that have come and gone. I can give you more than that, double that, out of Chinese companies that have come and gone that also saw the DJI idea and concept that, that don't exist anymore or only service a small portion of the market in, in the APAC area. They don't, they don't globally support anything. And so, you know, we, we, we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of patience and time. We got, we, we got to wait, you know, for this transition. We can't just, you know, shut her down. It's, it's impossible. Uh, to expect that the same workloads that are currently out there and the adoption rate that that is a that is bound to fall apart is not going to happen unless we have somebody a champion. And I don't think that I don't you know we could talk about Skydio possibly being a champion. We could talk about you know Inspired Flight being a champion. We could talk about these a couple of companies here about being them champions. But we're talking. You know, some of the some of the agencies I've worked with have got a plethora of different drones. They're not just one. And like mm -hmm. I said earlier, so most of these manufacturers make one drone. They they might make two, but you know, when you look at mo at, at some of these larger agencies that have 30 or 40 different um, drone types, you know, uh, or drone drone out there and they have they have three dragonfish they've got four m210s they've got 25 mavics they've got five autel they've got you know maybe a skydio they've got a, a thing there's a there's just this amplitude of, of or this 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 amount of stuff that just cannot be replaced today yeah you know with 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 the work that they're currently doing you just can't do it and if you and and i i saw you know a really good friend of mine christopher todd who had put an article out. I read this article that kind of, you know, outlined, you know, how it's semi hurt in the industry. There's no doubt about it. But in Florida, you know, they're making this transition. 
I can tell you that there ain't nobody happy in Florida. No, nobody. No. I mean, we can we can say that. Yeah, they they banned all the Chinese drones. They can't buy Chinese drones. They can't use Chinese drones. And there's some people that are buying some American stuff, and they're and but 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 are they happy about it? You know, are they are they pleased with what's going on, or are they forced to do it? And that's all their options, so they have to be happy about it. You know, that's a different feeling. It's that unnecessarily making people's lives more difficult. You know, we come back to and I, it's 100%. an easy it's an easy low hanging fruit example. But like you think about a police officer, or a police department that utilizes drone technology for search and rescue for uh, overwatch during tense situations. You're taking an experience that, again, seconds, you've got your drone out, set up, ready to go, and it's in the air. And now you're complicating that. On top of that, now you're adding some different nuances to the flight. Um, DJI has got their flight algorithm. Whatever they're using to fly their drones is top of the line. I've flown dozens of drones at this point in my life, and there's no question in my mind, even including Autel in that conversation, DJI's is the best. The flight experience is second to none. Um, so you're taking that that comfort and that convenience out of a situation that's already extremely tense, and you're adding more stressors to that situation, which is only going to result in inefficiencies when they conduct their job. So that little boy that got lost in the woods, you know, uh, and it's it's uh, ten degrees outside, and he's in a t-shirt, um, you know, now his time, you know, that he has is is cut you know, by a significant portion because the drone technology that they used to be able to depend upon is now causing problems that they wouldn't have had before. Um, it's, it's, it's a scary thought that we're doing this all in the name of, um, China bad America good to, to boil it down to caveman terms. And that's sort of where I, I come up to it. And you used the phrase earlier and I laughed really loud because it's the exact phrase I used when I talked to Stuart a little bit earlier to me. And I want to get your opinion on this. To me, this is this has nothing to do really with spying, data breaches, things like that. It has everything to do with China's kicking our ass, and we can't do anything else but legislate them out of the competition. That's that's all I see it as at this this point. I I hate to be honest about that or be, have my have my also very that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want to hear that. A lot of these these companies that are at at, at you know what they would consider the top of their game don't want to hear that mm -hmm. uh you know customers don't want to hear that they, they don't want to hear that they but you know when you when you get down in the trenches with these people and they've got one product against another product you know they're going to they're going to choose dji every time um and and it you know if we if we don't come up with this with a with a, a solution that makes sense for the industry you know for the american industry uh, like I said, there, there's no other drone manufacturers here in the U.S. that that export drones to any other places. You know, they, they don't do that. It's not part of their core business. They might sell X amount of units every so often. And, you know, like I said, it, it, it's it's complicated. And and yes, absolutely. We we just we're losing, man. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's not a it's not an it can't just be this negative thing all the time. So hate talking about it, but it is going to define, you know, 23 years of watching how this goes and seeing how it's going to be in the next five is going to be very interesting, very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I did talk to, you know, a gentleman not too long ago that did bring up the whole national security and, you know, that's, it's un-American not to think otherwise the way I'm thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, well, hold on. I'm like, I'm like, let me let me tell you something, you know. I care about the cop mm -hmm. that goes home at night. I care about that kid you just talked about. Mm -hmm. I care about the agency that's making those those differences in there and and the impact of 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 budgeting back on other things they normally would spend money on and can be accomplished by the drone. They're mm -hmm. saving money, they're saving time, they're saving lives. And we jump onto the public safety side a little bit more easy. We get that you know, oh man, feel bad about the public safety kids because they're 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 doing what they can. And if we're not prepared uh, to just shut that down completely and just hopefully they they can figure it out, if we're not prepared to to find out that they're just not going to do it at all because it's very we we're not going to give them the time. And right. I said, money and time. They don't have the money, 
and they don't have the time to wait out for some fantastic drone company to come along and make what what DJI is making. They don't have right. that. And when you look at all the other industries that are currently out there doing stuff, mapping and and GIS stuff and inspections and you know, they're going to have to stop. And mm -hmm. when they stop, you know, they well, we already went through this in 2018. We are we we did this. We 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 went through this cycle of we don't want, you know, DJI and there were no other great choices and the industry the the customers of the industry figured that out you know then they eh, well it's okay we can still buy we can still use it's okay you know and 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 instead again i had to give classes on how to how to consider disconnecting your internet how to you know do firmware updates if available differently how to manage your data differently you know these are these are ways that we overcome those problems, but you know, just again to, to generalize it to that that they're just bad because it's China is it's just it's just not the way to go. It's what bad. what do you say to people? Because I hear this a lot too when I when I speak with people, and much like uh, the person weaponizing patriotism against you in that conversation, it's on American uh, to to think any other way than we need to have only American drones. Um, that's that's an unfair statement, uh, but that's neither here nor there in this conversation. But what do you say to people that say to you? Well, John, you know, it's really not that big of a deal because they're only banning the use of these drones in, you know, certain sectors, the the federal for federal projects, for uh, fire rescue, for police. It, what do you say to those people? Because I, I also think that's a non-answer. Same. I mean, it's just, it, I mean, how do you how do you get how do you get around it? Like, I mean, if we're going to federally exclude, you know, things, well, well, industry and I say industry, meaning like, you know, the the power companies, the um, infrastructure guys, I mean, guys that 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 are that are doing things that are not government at all. Follow that. Yeah. They follow that precedence. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to bring it up in 2018. There was a don't fly any DJI drones on the basis. That was that was a memo that came from the army. Mm -hmm. Then. Berkshire Hathaway Energy Group, that owns a whole lot of energy companies in the United States, followed suit. They right. said, well, if the Army's worried about it, then maybe we should be worried about it. And, right. and, and that's exactly what happened. So when that kind of, well, if the government's worried about it, then, then we're going to be worried about it. Then all the drone service providers are also going to be worried about it because their clients and customers are not going to want them. To, to use the drones, they're going to say, oh, no, you know, I heard about that DJI China thing or, you know, you can't use that here. And 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 that's that's not going to be good, you know, no. but there might be some industries and some, you know, agencies that don't give a damn. They don't mm -hmm. care. They'll, they'll keep using stuff and that's fine. But, you know, that's not, again, the message we should be sending. And if we come back to what I said earlier, make a standard, make a data secure standard for all drones to comply with if they're not all doing it. Um, even, even the designs right now, you know, you've, you've got another gold standard that, you know, back in the day, five minutes was a long time for me to fly a drone. Five minutes was a long time. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I put a drone in the air for five minutes. That was a long time. When I fly free FPV, especially freestyle, and I realize that the drone I'm flying can get five to seven minutes on a LiPo battery, I am ecstatic about it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, if you said that now about a DJI, I'd be like, what? 20, <laughs> 20 years ago, five minutes was a long time. If I could get to five minutes and 30 seconds, I was like, woohoo. Yeah. Now, now people are going, you know, is, oh, an hour? God, yeah. that's it? <laughs> like, I need more than that. Wow. It's like, what? <laughs> wow. Um, so, so anyway, the, 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 when we look at those, at these things that, uh, that define how we make, we, we got to set those up too. You know, we don't have any safety specific standards on drones. We don't have any, any building parameters or specifications that have to hit certain markers, you know, and we, we need to get to that too. I'm not saying the government needs to get involved, but somebody's got to get involved to be able to to standardize the way we do things. We, we don't just go buy a car from the car lot and hopefully it's got a seatbelt in it. Right. It's required. Mm -hmm. It's required. You know, any manufacturer that nowadays it's required to make sure that the car has seatbelts. It's yeah. required to make sure it has certain, you know, safety features. They crash the holy bejesus out of the things. <laughs> Airlines are the same. You know, they, 
They they got to go through egregious amount of of passing in in safety and performance in order to um, to be able to be sold into the market. Yeah. And we're not we're not we don't look at that at all. So, and God forbid if they come up with all those standards, and DJI meets every single one of them. Which you know they will, <laughs> you know it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, and, and you know what's funny is you made a, a point about the the aviation industry. I mean, uh, people don't think this way, but people that are are heavily involved in the drone industry realize that we are just an offshoot of the aviation industry. I mean, drones are aircraft, and so you know when you look at the standards that you know Boeing is held to and that Air Max is held to or Airbus is held to uh, when they manufacture their aircraft. You, you would you're surprised that the same level of uh, thoroughness and redundancy is not expected in the UAV sector. Yeah, some some people talk about this and say, "Oh, we don't want that." You know, we want to keep it simple. Well, it's not simple anymore. No, you know, it's it's not it's not that anymore. It's not going down and buying a drone from Walmart and flying it next to a base or near a thing, an airport or something like that. And having the whole rest of the communities going, oh, did you see that guy do something stupid on it? You know, he's going to ruin our whole industry because one guy did one thing stupid. All right. Well, you know, we we, we got to get around that. You know, how do you get stupidity out of it is that you limit that barrier of entry. And, right. and even though we, we want to be able to push people into, you know, this aviation portion of, of the world, you know, of, of the of of the industry, but we we got to be able to follow suit in some degree to to meet those expectations, those standards. Like I said, we we got to hit those things. If we don't, we're not taken seriously. And 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 when I say, hey, you know, if you're going to ban all Chinese, then then look at Boeing. Make sure they don't use Chinese devices. Make sure right. they don't have you know things in there. They've got to. There's got to be something that that standardizes how we do business moving forward and we're we're still a very new industry still very you know all over, very fragile volatile you know changing ever changing and we've got to get to the point of like we've set some expectations of what we should be doing you yeah know? yeah and it's it's you know i used to always say this you just made a really great point and um it's going to be hard for some people to hear but i i stand on this now when i first started um, and even when I started doing some more YouTube stuff and tried to get uh, a more prominent presence in the industry out there, um, you know, I always used to say everybody should have a drone. And the more that I learn about the technology and the more that I, I interact with people that have flown drones, the more I'm starting to realize that's not true. Um, you know, there, there's uh, – do I think that everybody should have the opportunity to try to own a drone? Sure, everybody should have equal opportunity, but there are people out there that just – are not equipped with, with the tech with the technology we have now. Yeah, they're oh, not yeah. equipped to be able to handle it. That You're jumping on one of those uh, on one of those layers of things that I absolutely try to define as being. It, it's a big deal for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I've taught hundreds, if not a thousand plus people, how to fly radio control, how to fly an RC airplane, how to how to put together and do something with an RC helicopter. I had a hobby shop. I'd go out with these kids. I'd go out with adults. I'd go out with women. I'd go out with elderly people. It didn't matter. And try yeah. to show them how to fly. And even though that that's definitely more complex than flying a drone, there's still some things that are going to be absolute liabilities if you don't, again, vet the people that are capable of doing that. Sure. And we have, again, standards in the aviation side, uh, whether they're medical standards, eyesight standards, um, th they have them. And we don't have that at all, again, in our industry. And we have to be able to pass ex you know, certain proficiencies and capabilities to show that we are not going to be a liability to my agency, a liability to my company that I work for, or even a liability to myself if I'm my, my own drone service provider. And without those levels of threshold and, and, and being able to, again, it's, it's a standard problem. What's the standard? Just go get your 107. Make sure you take the FAA drone zone test, you know, the fast yeah. test. That's it. That's as far as it goes. You, we don't do anything else. We don't ask, you know, what is your experience, you know. But if some people do want an experience, they want a bachelor's degree of some sort. <laughs> like, so 
So what? Yeah. how does that apply to actual, you know, I've got thousands of thousands of hours on drone, thousands of hours, yeah. not, not a couple. I've got thousands of hours on, on aircraft and I don't expect anyone to be at my level when I, when I get things ready to fly and do what I do. However, as, as I observe people that have been picked from their agency or I, I see somebody that's like, hey, I was thinking about, you know, starting a drone company. I'm like, mm, <laughs> yeah, mm, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. I just don't think you have you don't have the capacity for it. And that's OK if, we, if, you know, if people can't. But if you don't have something that they can aspire or pass and get to, you know, or again, set levels of, of experience or 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 certain jobs that, that, that people qualify for. So you, you touch on a great point here. One of those things I might end up working on as a as a thing in the droning company is that you know the droning company is finding jobs for people, mm -hmm. but how do you rate those people? And it's you know how do you know that I have it, you know X experience? What aircraft? How am I as a business as a business guy? You know we're just we're just trying to put people in touch with people, but. At the right. end of the day, they're 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 you know if you wanted to hire a framer to frame your house, you don't want to just pick some guy that might be doing it down there on the corner. Right. You want to be able to, to find somebody that knows all of the the certifications and inspection capabilities and and knowing how the city wants it to build so that you don't become liable hiring or or bringing on this person. So you know we don't have any of that. We don't we don't have that in this in the industry yet. And so. You know, I think three you you brought up three great things here uh, for this conversation, <laughs> and um, you know now I got to readjust. You know how I'm going to address this in the world. <laughs> you know, so I don't so, mean to add more work to your workload. <laughs> it, it, it's things we need to think about and actually execute on, and that's yeah. that's the trick. You know, it's not just talking about it; it's executing on it. It's getting the right people together to make sure that we're all on the same page and. You know, as much as like you said, you want everybody to try it out. Sure, try it out, see if it works for you. But there's got to, you know, th there are people that try to be a PPL, you know, pilot and they don't pass the capabilities to do it. And I, I'm a Marine, you know, I went to boot camp with 93 individuals the day we showed up on on the uh, at boot camp. There, 93 people stood on the yellow footsteps and only 52 graduated, you know. Not everybody and, could be a Marine, but exactly. man, there was a lot of people that wanted to be, you know, <laughs> and not everybody made it. And, you know? and that's the thing is, is being honest about that. And, you know, look too, me saying that, I just want to be very clear. I, there are cases where I look at somebody and I, you know, I watch them fly a drone for the first time. And I think to myself, I don't know if you have the capacity and it's not even necessarily a performance level because you can learn to be a better operator. Um, it, it's more so your mindset while you're flying. That's that's what I look at is are they behaving responsibly? Are they able to manage any type of anxiety or any type of stress that they have during the flight? And those are the things that tell me whether or not this person I, should be a pilot. Absolutely. I mean, I'm the pilot. Yeah. I'm the one that should decide whether or not it's safe to fly. Mm -hmm. My commander in chief, my guy that hired me, my my company that's forcing me to do something, I have that choice and the power to make that decision. Right. And it doesn't matter how much you're paying me to fly some thing for you, Michael Bay, for to make a movie. <laughs> if I don't think it's going to be safe and I I am responsible for that, I am 100 percent responsible for the operation of that bird. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that inhibit it inhibits me to be safe or to do it right, or make sure I'm in the right spot when I need to be, I I can tell people, ah, not gonna happen. It's, for, I'm sorry. For, <laughs> for anybody that's, that's looking to get into drone work of any capacity, whether you just wanna do photo, video, whether you're doing inspections, whatever, I highly encourage you, if you're not already familiar with the term, to look up the term stop work and understand what that means. I was not accustomed mm -hmm. to that until I actually started doing um, gas leak inspections on natural gas pipelines with an M300. It wasn't until then when my boss at the time told me, hey, by the way, uh, under this this act that we have here or that that's in place, you have the ability at any point 
point, even though you're not in charge, to stop work. If you feel things are unsafe or you feel things are putting you in a position that you could be unsafe, uh, you can hit that button anytime and we have to stop, assess the risk. And if it's valid, we have to stop and we have to address it before we move forward. Um, that's super important to know because like you said, in, a, in an extreme example, Michael Bay hires you to get a, a drone shot you know, for one of his movies and he's paying you a bunch of money to do it. There's a lot of stress with that, but you can't let that outweigh being res- being a responsible pilot. You cannot let no, it happen. And, and and those are those are those kind of uh, decisions you do have to make as being again not to be a liability to yourself or to whoever might be around. You know, and if you feel confident that that everything will go perfectly fine, there should be no issues. You also have to have the same capacity of what if it does. Mm-hmm. You know you. You have to understand, I, I did everything that there was on my checklist to make sure it was safe. I made sure everything was perfect. I made sure the weather was great. I made whatever the reasons are to go ahead and put it up in the air and a brushless motor fails mm-hmm. and down she comes and crashes and damages and hurts. Yep. Uh, we also have to recognize that things like that are going to happen and we don't need to blame the person if they did everything they possibly could to make sure that flight was going to be safe. We just had a door blow off of a 730. Was that the <laughs> I was fault? just about to say that. Did, <laughs> did we blame the pilot that, no. that, that happened? You know, no, no. We, we, we grounded the aircraft. We looked at, at, at what the, at what the problem was. We did inspections. We checked real quick. We made sure that it wasn't going to be a problem in the future. And we did not take the pilot and say, you know what, I'm I'm gonna give you a fine because you didn't, you know, because the brushless motor fell apart and 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 caused a crash. You know, right. we, we don't, we shouldn't be doing that, and we shouldn't be setting that precedence either. You no, know, I we agree. should have checklists. We should have, comp, you know, uh, people that 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 can make those decisions and make them uh, correctly and yeah. and uh, understand. And it isn't all about the rules all the time. Sometimes it's just a gut feeling. It's a gut yeah. feeling that that I just don't. I just don't know. And what, what? how does that gut feeling come along? That's usually experience. Yeah. Usually yeah. experience. You trust your instinct and instinct, like you said, is built on experience. You don't just, yeah. not all the time, but you usually don't get instincts just like that. It's usually from a series of events that you've experienced in your life or things that you've seen happen in your life that you draw on then subconsciously. So um, when I have, when I have guys that crash something or have a problem and they just tell me, I, I always use this all the time. Yeah, I'd, I'd ask him a series of questions. Well, you know, what happened? You know, did, can you explain? Were you observant? Did you see what happened? And they're like, I don't know. The drone just went crazy. Mm-hmm. And and I'm like, what, what 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 is crazy? You know, I mean, what what does that mean? And right. they're like, I, I don't know. It just it just it just it just went crazy. And I'm I'm like, when you talk to somebody that has experience, they can tell you. I was watching the app. I saw the battery voltage drop like that. I was paying attention to everything because the inexperience is just, you know, hanging on to their life that they're not going to crash the bird that costs their their company several thousand dollars. You know, right. they're not aware of everything that's going on. You know, there was there might have been a bird that hit your your thing. I mean, who can control that? But, right. you know, th- there are things when you deduce exactly what happened that an experienced pilot can can really help you you know, troubleshoot what happened and, and really find out if it was a, a fault of the aircraft or a fault of the pilot. And mm-hmm. most of the time that I don't know, it just went crazy is a lack of experience and, and time with equipment. You know, yeah. that's that's usually it. Yeah. And and the correction too, you know, those same guys that are people because it can be women too, but those same people that are flying the drone and they say, oh, it just went crazy. A lot of the times they're watching something happen to the drone that's abnormal, uh, whether it's drift, whether it's sway, whether it is actually the drone doing something violent mm-hmm. in the air and they overcorrect because they panic. Um, I'm not going to fault people, especially newer pilots for that because, you know. Dick, logic would dictate if what's happening up there is happening fast, then I need to ha- act fast, which isn't always true, yes. but I could understand where you yeah. draw that conclusion. Um, a lot of the time it's, it's overcorrection, but like you said, to your point, a lot of the time, you know, it's something that you can identify and then you can understand how to handle it. Um, recently, I had a, a drone project that I was I was flying for a gas and oil company in Louisiana and just getting photo video of their operation for a commercial they wanted to put together. And uh, my Mini 4 Pro, a DJI drone, to, to just put the stamp on it can happen to anybody at any time with any product. A DJI drone, Mini 4 Pro, I was flying it through a facility, open air facility, and I was 20 feet away from it. 
it fell out of the air. And after sort of looking at what happened, uh, looking at the footage, uh, remembering what happened in the moment, you know, I sort of deduced what I thought happened and it was a motor failure. Um, one of the motor, the back right motor failed because that's the way that the drone moved. Um, I still had signal. There was no drop in battery voltage, anything like that. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, sent it in DJI after some discourse back and forth. Uh, they, they finally confirmed for me that, yeah, there was a motor failure and they replaced the drone for me. Um, but that that's the kind of stuff, again, when you're talking about instinct, you're talking about experience. You don't get that without having to live through that, but it's important you draw off of it in the future then. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, you know, I'm I'm an old RC guy. You know, you don't you don't build something for two years and expect to crash it. But <laughs> I hate to say it, shit happens, man. It does. <laughs> you know, it, it does. <laughs> it happens, and and you know, we can never. You know, that that's another another part of the industry that we we need to shape and change. Is that you know, of course, everybody needs to be as safe as possible when they operate, but. For the sake of safety, we we get a lot of people that are fear mongered because of the sake of safety, mm-hmm. and we're still seeing it show up in the news occasionally that you know a drone hit a helicopter or a drone fell out of the sky and hit somebody in the face or something like that. Where it's going to be newsworthy because it's because because they're drones, but right. you know when we see somebody you know die in a in a Cessna, and it and it's on the news for for two seconds. Sometimes it doesn't even get national exposure. It only gets local exposure. I hate to say it, but that has become a negligible uh, number Mm -hmm. of of people dying and getting injured in in real aircraft, people dying on the road, driving their cars. You know, we talk about it a little bit, but it isn't the main focus. And anytime anything happens in this industry that that gets people all out of out of out of sorts. We, we're going to get more flights of happening. We're going to get more things happening. And as more happens, you're going to get more accidents. You're going to get more bad choices, more human factor, um, more failures. It's bound to happen. It is what happens with everything. Yeah. Um, but we've got to be able to to not shut things down simply because of the possibility it might happen. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, we we need to also have America step up and allow certain testing and and uh, R and D things. You know, we had Zipline that had to fly in Africa for fricking a year before they. You know, we had even uh, back in the day the the um, 3DR was doing stuff in Mexico. Yeah. You know, I mean, we couldn't even allow companies, and that that's another problem. We couldn't even allow companies to test stuff here. To make sure that their equipment was running at at premium, C- collect the data that showed that their stuff was being safe. We we can't even do that. It, you know the FAA is so against that. Oh, you have to do that way out in the middle of nowhere. That's fine. You know, th- mm-hmm. th- then make it happen. But right. you know, we we we've got to be able to also take that safety aspect and not just say we just we're not going to do it because because right. that stops innovation. And uh, it stops creativity. It stops the ability to to be where DJI is now. Yeah, you know? yeah, and you know, uh, it's it, the public perception is is uh, plays into that, and that brings me to my next point. And I want to address this now um, because we are running low on time, and I, we have enough time to talk about this. There's a bill that's currently being discussed, and I'm I, I'm not privy to exactly where it's at, so you might be able to correct how I phrase this. But there's something going on in the state of Utah right now when it comes to drones, not dissimilar to what's been going on in Florida, not dissimilar to what's been going on in a variety of other states. And you being a Utahian, a Utah, yeah, Utahian, um, <laughs> a Utahn, Utahn, a Utahn. Okay, <laughs> you being a Utahn. Um, I know this is really uh, near and dear to you and uh, something that's important to you. So I just want to give you the floor to sort of talk about what's happening. And uh, anybody that's watching this that might be from the state of Utah that can take action with it, you know, how they can help uh, uh, push back against it. Yeah, so we've had a couple of things, you know, um, our good friend Greg from Pilot Institute had put out a a video that's like the the government going crazy edition. Uh, It kind of explains a little bit more in detail there. So but, you know. Uh, about those specific laws, but the one that was kind of critical that I uh, have been involved in or trying to give information on is is more affecting our public safety. Um, they also have come into this play of 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 denying uh, any more purchases or use of Chinese manufactured drones. And my um, closest uh, 
I, I mean, a really good friend of mine that runs the search and rescue group here for Weber County, which is in the county I live, the city I live. Um, he's been, Kyle Nordfords is his name. Kyle has been in charge of the drone program for the, for the group. He's also a pilot uh, for Alaskan Airlines. So um, he, he's been, he used his own equipment all the way back then, bought his own equipment, and by no means did he buy an American drone. He right. couldn't afford one. You know, the, the, most of the time search and rescue groups are not funded by the state or the funded by the city. Sometimes they're all voluntary people. They mm -hmm. bring their own horses, they bring their own trailers, they bring their own snowmobiles, they have their own equipment. Sometimes we'll get some some do dollars that come from the county or from the state that they live in, but but it's rare that 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 a lot of the search and rescue groups have that. Well, uh, back in 2020, I went ahead at RMUS, donated them an M300 um, at basically cost, and uh, was able to get an M300 up and running. Uh, it is no doubt the best drone for that particular job. Mm -hmm. And I will argue with anyone on that, even even in Autel products, it is the best for that job. Mm -hmm. And when they are now told that they possibly can't use that product anymore, they've already found like 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 50 people on the mountain. I mean, we've got big mountains right behind my house here, 5,000 yeah. feet tall. I've been to Utah. Those mountains are mountains. <laughs> oh, they, they, and I'm in the northern side. So, you know, they're, they're mountains. And, yeah. and there's a lot of people that come here you know, hiking and even our local guys that go up there and, and for whatever reason, they get lost, they get tired, they forget to bring their gear. Maybe their cell phone works, maybe it doesn't. But but to say that that, that equipment has not absolutely helped this, this agency with their efforts to save lives and people is crazy. Mm -hmm. And and then to all of a sudden have this this new bill introduced by one of our senators that that might shut that down. Uh, more recent news. I mean, I just got a I just got a, a a text from Kyle just before I started this this uh, podcast. It said it might actually affect a little bit more of the commercial operations and infrastructure stuff than it will affecting the public safety right now. So that that's great news. That means that we have impacted those type of decisions to not impact the operations of these of these guys. So. If you're, and it, you know, there, there's a lot of guys, uh, Vic Moss, uh, you know, he's definitely on top of stuff like this. He, he's gone around, looked at multiple states, got a hold of people, you know, within the, within that state to uh, try to help legislators, you know, help decide not to do, try not to do this, you know, idea or concept of just banning it all outright. So um, moral of the story, get involved. Yeah. You know, now is the time. Now is the time because, if you don't say anything and don't help and don't try to try try to uh, have them understand the impact of what they're what they're deciding to do on that upper level, you'll end up with another Florida like we had already talked about. Mm -hmm. You'll you know you know Oklahoma has got a whole um, the Bureau of Narcotics, my good friend that runs their drone division out there. They've got a plethora of equipment that keeps people from doing the bad things that they do on the Bureau of Narcotics and and it's statewide, you know, and and they are also looking at legislation that might end up shutting that down. So, you know, until we can absolutely come up with a solution that's going to help my friend Kyle save people off the side of this mountain up here, and it's it, it's better than or performs as good as an M300 with a H20T, you know, <laughs> and and or at least set set a standard of data you know, you know, information that can't be shared or shouldn't be shared. <laughs> you know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta do that. Get involved. It, it, it's it, yeah. I got to echo that. Get involved. I know it doesn't affect Pennsylvania, but you know, it, it's, it's one of those deals where I, I encourage anybody that lives in a different state that's facing this to get involved because here's the thing. It's hard to get involved. It's hard to make your voice heard. Not necessarily the action itself, but continuing that to beat that drum is hard. But you know what's a heck of a lot harder is reversing a law that's been signed into law. That is a heck of a lot harder than stopping one that isn't there yet. So definitely get involved, right? Whoever you need to, your state legislatures, whoever that is, whoever your representative is, and make sure that they know um, and continue to participate in those conversations because it doesn't go away until it officially goes away. Yeah. Well, I, 
you know, kind of wrapping up, you know, as far as uh, coming on to the droning company, I'm hoping to, you know, again, have a great platform that uh, gives a voice to the industry outside of, of what we're currently doing. Um, as mentioned, I have a lot of great friends in this industry. Uh, some own companies, some are just service providers, some are, you know, trying to do their own thing in their own states or, or whatever. But I mean, I've been to Colombia, Brazil, Puerto Rico, I've been to Japan, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan. I've been to the UK and and everybody needs the droning company. You know, mm-hmm. everybody, we can't just focus only on on what we're, you know, what be very look through the lens of the American. We we've got to be able to kind of support the whole thing because every country and all these, you know, every, a, lot, a lot of people just need our need our help in general. And it 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 really humbles me that uh, number one, I was asked to be here. It, it really does. But number two, it, it, it also humbles me that there's so so much, uh, so many people cheering for uh, what I'm doing and what, what we're doing as, as an industry, you know, getting, being champions for me. And yeah. uh, I'm glad that you're part of it and uh, can help us succeed and push forward. And, and all that you've already done so far has been you know, amazing uh, to see. And I'm, I'm hoping to, to be the guiding light and help out with that. So. Yeah. And, you know, to reiterate our point from earlier when we talked about this earlier, too, is, you know, we're excited to have you on. I'm ecstatic to have you on because not only are you going to bring, you know, benefit to the droning company and the drone community as a whole, it's going to be great from a selfish aspect for me to actually get some more exposure with you because you've so much to teach and so much that I can learn. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that, man. But, you know, on top of that, too, like, if you go to these these shows, and I've met some of you out there that might be watching this at these shows, you come up to me, talk to me. Um, it, you really do embody what the droning company is about, and it's about being humble while distributing information and learning something new. And so, you know, you embody all three of those traits, and you know, we're happy to have you on board. So, really excited about what the future holds with this. Um, you know, and we'll have you on again on Let's Talk Drones, even if we're not partnered directly with the droning company on an episode. I still want to pick your brain, still talk to you, and I know there are a lot of people that are watching oh, this yeah. that want the same. <laughs> yeah, so. I think I think we'll let the dust settle after this announcement and see, you know, let that go for a minute. You know, I'm sure my my uh, phone's going to explode and people are going to be asking, <laughs> you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and we'll, we'll let that happen. But, sure. you know, I, I'd, uh, you know, having some message come from me every every month or every couple of weeks or something like that, talking about some of the points that, you uh, that might be affecting our industry or upcoming shows that we might be involved in or whether you can find me, um, you know, and, and helping this industry. Uh, super excited about it, you know, so we'll see how how it goes. I mean, all we can do is cross our fingers and and cheer it on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, I guess it is time to let the dust settle. I want to thank you again, John McBride, for being on today. Um, it's always great talking to you, and I can't wait to have you on again. Um, if you liked this video, this p- episode of the podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify or you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure that you subscribe and follow this show, this channel. Uh, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up icon. Uh, hit the plus icon. It lets those two entities, Spotify and YouTube, know that you like the content. It gets it out to more people just like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones about drones and for drone pilots this is the channel for you so is the droning companies make sure you subscribe and follow and while you're at it hit the notification icon too you'll get a notification every time a new episode is posted until next time i'm chris the drone geek that's john mcbride the drone jesus we're out of here see ya